hidden beneath the world we know. Remember when cyberspace was the place? Back when Hollywood channeled their obsession with virtual reality into movies like Hackers and The Matrix? Well, one person who remembers is San Diego indie video game developer E. McNeil. I kind of laugh at the, you know, the movies that I have seen now and how they represent like what hacking is, where, I don't know, you wave a hand and you've broken through the security or something. These visions of hacking your way through virtual reality might seem like a 90s throwback, but in hardcore gaming circles, they're coming back in a big way. That's thanks to the Oculus Rift, a virtual reality headset attracting lots of excitement. McNeil made a cyberpunk hacking game for it called CS. You're like in the system and you're zooming from node to node trying to hack stuff and capture the classified data, you know, presumably for money. His game won first place in a competition put on by the Irvine-based company that makes the headset, and I got to play it. Welcome to cyberspace. I entered this 3D virtual space by strapping the Oculus Rift over my head, shutting out the world around me. I positioned its two eyeball-sized screens right in front of my face. And when I moved my head around, my first-person viewpoint moved too, making me feel like I was actually inside this cyberpunk world. McNeil says he and other developers see the Oculus Rift as the headset that will finally make good on the promise of virtual reality gaming. There were many high-profile failures back in the 90s, including Nintendo's Virtual Boy. It had crude graphics drawn only in red and was notorious for making players nauseous. Yeah, this is, this is a step above the Virtual Boy, I can tell you that. Virtual reality may have gone out of fashion in gaming, but look elsewhere and you'll see it never really went away. Let's take a trip to Dr. Robert McClay's clinic at the San Diego Naval Medical Center. We're using uh, virtual reality to help treat post-traumatic stress disorder, um, which is a condition um, that is not uncommon in folks who've come back from combat. Dr. McClay uses a kind of exposure therapy with veterans. The idea is to help them deal with their trauma by gradually exposing them to what caused it. Of course, Dr. McClay can't send his patients back into Middle East combat, so he uses a virtual reality headset to simulate Iraq and Afghanistan. So let's set the trauma now to severe, and we'll blow up this car. Plugged into this virtual therapy, I could see how it would trigger a traumatic memory. But I could also see that the graphics circa 2005 are getting kind of outdated. Dr. McClay hopes that all the advancements being made in video games will trickle down to clinics soon, just as they have in the past. If we had to build it up from the ground um, without the, the video game industry already working on these issues, uh, it wouldn't have been possible. UC San Diego's Dr. Eric Veery agrees. Without the gaming world, we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be where we are. His research showed that virtual reality could treat people with inner ear disorders that disturbed their sense of motion. They can't keep up with the world. So the beauty of virtual reality is that I create the world and I can make it move the way I want. Basically, virtual reality can overcorrect for someone's balance issues in real reality. So now, Dr. Viri hopes newer, cheaper headsets could find new applications for other diseases. If we build a cognitive prosthesis for somebody with Alzheimer's disease, but it costs $100,000, that'll never work. But if we can use the $500, game systems. Now we're talking about something that could make a huge difference in people's lives. For now, the Oculus Rift is only available to game developers. Oculus hopes to ship the headset for consumers sometime next year. David Wagner, KPBS News.